Hello and welcome to this week's episode of the Shamir Shah Project. As you can tell, I am sitting behind my desk in my office because we are still under lockdown. What I have done the past few months and over the last year under lockdown is created a lot of trails, a lot of routes, a lot of mapping ideas for me to go on adventures post lockdown. So I've created routes for hiking, I've created routes for cycling, I've created routes for bikepacking adventures whilst we're in lockdown so that when we're out of lockdown I can go on these adventures. And that's when I thought perhaps I should share with you a piece of software that I use to create these trails, to create these routes. I think they could be very, very useful to you. They are extremely useful to me. My name is Shamir Shah. I'm a landscape photographer, passionate adventurer, mountain biker, and a devoted conservationist. A few years ago, my freedom and independence was nearly taken away from doing what I love by becoming a carer for my special needs son. Since then, I've doubled the stakes of my mission to make nature and the outdoors an inseparable and fundamental part of every family. This has now become my project. Just to let you know, I am not sponsored by the company. I'm not sponsored by the app or the um, online service they provide. I am just sharing with you some great ideas that I think you will absolutely embrace for your future adventures. So let's get started. This is my go-to tool for creating routes and doing some research when I need to do research on specific places. It is the Ordnance Survey tool and as you know Ordnance Survey is one of the go-to places for mapping services. They do have this digital platform as well as hard copy maps which I use too. So both hard copy maps and the digital tools put together and used simultaneously and uh, collaboratively works really well and uh, as mentioned it is a tool that will absolutely extend your knowledge and your confidence in hiking, trekking, bikepacking, especially if you get used to it and learn how to use it properly. So I'm going to give you a basic overview of the interface first. If we start on the left side here, this is the menu. The menu has routes. If you click on routes, you've got discover routes, which is discovering other people's routes. And if I click on that, you can see you can adjust the routes by walking, by running, by cycling, or other. You can also adjust various other functions here. If I click on create custom route, that is where we create routes and I create routes for the hikes that I'd like to do and they are bespoke to me. And then we go down to my routes. So once I create a route, my route will show up over here. And you can see it by all routes, walking routes, run routes, cycle routes or other. I don't have any here at the moment uh, because for the purpose of showing you this this showcase or this software I have removed my routes for the moment and then you've got your favorite routes here these are the routes that are favorited and they may be routes that have been created by other people and routes that I fancy doing at some point or I have already done and therefore I have them in my favorited routes and Last but not least, you've got the import GPX file. So if you recorded 
a specific route that you did on your telephone or on your Garmin device, then you can export it onto your computer and then import it into the Odin Survey app and it will show up over here and you can view all the different measurements and the elevation and what exactly you hiked. So that's the menu. These routes and places appear, function pretty much the same, opens up the menu item. Places I will show you. Places is great for if you want to hike in specific areas and you want to be able to have certain amenities near you. For example, car parks. As you can see, all the different car parks have showed up. National Trust. Again, they've all showed up here on the map. And if you click closer in, so if you go closer there, you will see that there's loads more as you load the page and you can see where the National Trust places are, where the car parks are. So places you can adjust and tick off the ones you want and remove the ones you don't want. So for this demonstration's uh, sake, I will remove them for now. If we go over to the right side, you've got your grid reference. This refers to your Eastings and Northings, which you learn when you use a hard copy map and to pinpoint your grid reference to exactly where you are on the map. So this is very useful to have. Expand basically expands the software app so that gets rid of all the menus and you can see it more clearly. Uh, print, so you can print off the route map that you do, simple as that. You can get some help here. This tool is for magnifying the map. simple as that if we go down to the bottom right this gives you the measurement in kilometers and miles so as you draw your map you can actually measure and see how much mileage you're going to actually do this is the terrain and the mapping so it's it's the mapping service shows you different topography i guess so you can get an aerial view, you can get a green space view, such as that. You can get a OS leisure map, which is mostly what I use. Uh, you can get a 3D map. So it gives you a 3D look at the map and your route. But mostly I use the OS leisure map when I route and track exactly where I'm going. The final function here on the right is uh, the target is find my location as it says. Basically it tells you exactly where you are while you are creating your route map. So that's the interface. Very simple, quite basic in terms of maneuvering, but I think they've made it nice and clear for any person to use it, including beginners. So now that I've showed you the basic interface of the Ordnance Survey app, I'm going to dig deeper and show you more about discovering routes. So if you don't want to make a route yourself and you really want to discover other people's routes or other established business routes that uh, have been created by Country Walking magazine or uh, AA Walking and such people, then you can use this tool to actually find out and discover the best routes. So I'm going to show you this in a bit more detail and focus on this in this video. I would like to do the create custom route video another time because it's even more detailed, it's even more advanced. So in this video, I am going to focus on discovering routes. So there's two ways to go to your routes. You either click on the menu at the top here and then go to discover routes, as you can see, or you can simply click on the routes at the top here and discover routes. We are in Wales, Abergavenny, Abergavenny, no, Abergavenny, 
and Krakow. This is very close to the Black Mountains. And as soon as I move the map around, you can see that other places start to show up. There is indicators on the map here. So you've got green, you've got orange, and then you've got red. Green simply means it's a leisurely walk. The orange, as you go down, you can see is a moderate walk, meaning the distance increases, the time it takes increases, and there's probably a little bit more elevation. There is also the red map. So the red is challenging. So more mileage, more hours, probably more hill climbing. So this is how we start to discover routes. So if we're staying in the area of Krakow, very close to Abergavenny, if I can pronounce it correctly, and we want to create walks around here and discover walks around here, then this is a great place to start. You can search for a place on the map by going to search for location and typing in the location. But if you know exactly where it is, then simply go to it on the map and you will see various hikes, various walking adventures that pop up as you move the map around. There you go. So let's say we want to do a sweet walk on Sugarloaf. Sugarloaf, as you know, is a mountain in the Black Mountains, Black Mountain range in Wales. We can simply go there and say, OK, that looks half decent it's just under five miles and it'll take an hour and a half we can do this just before lunch then you can click on it and it gives you the number of routes there so we know there's a number two there so there's two routes there trail magazine has done one and aa walks has done one so if we select trail magazine we click on view route and it shows you the route you can zoom in closer to have a look at the route, including the elevations and the crossings, maybe across rivers, across what you're going to be walking on the terrain. And you can see the elevation gain in different areas until you get to Sugarloaf, which is over 580 meters. So you've got that there. That gives you a good indication by zooming in to see exactly what you're going to be hiking. And we can zoom back out to give you an overview of what else is around that specific walk. On the left side, it gives you further details about the walk. So you can see the ratings, how good this walk is. You can base your walk on the number of uh, five star ratings it's had. Again, you can see how much mileage it is, how long it's going to take to walk and what kind of weather you may get, uh, which is today. So the sort of weather we're going to get today. If you want to walk on a Saturday, just click on Saturday and it gives you the time intervals and the sort of weather you're going to be looking at. If we go back to this left panel, it gives you a little description too about where you can park, and a little bit of geographical information and in some cases you even get historical information which is nice to read before you go out once we close that you've got the other options down here so add to favorites if we want to hike this in the future and i want to add it to my favorites i simply click on that and there you go it's added it to my favorites if I want to export this GPX file so that I can use it on my mobile phone or my Garmin, then I can simply click on that and it begins the download, which will be on my desktop very shortly. If I want to send and share this file on social media, you can, or you can email it to a friend who you might be hiking with. I love the start fly through function or the fly through function because it really gives you an idea of what you're going to be hiking when you start to hike and when you're halfway through and when you're towards the end and gives a good indication of what you need to carry 
what sort of terrain you'll be walking and hiking on, if it's difficult or not, it will give you a little bit of an indication. So if we do a little fly through, you can see what it's about. So we'll wait a few minutes while it renders. And once it started rendering, you can see it starts to create the route and walk along what you're going to be walking. So this is pretty much exactly what you're going to walk. The little tabs you see with the different towns and villages nearby. Again, it gives you an indication of what's nearby in case you did want to go off pist and go to a little village, have a cup of tea and then continue the hike. You can do that. So that is the full mapping service. You can stop it and have a look at each area a bit closer if you wanted to or just send it to a friend and they can have a look as well. So the fly through function is phenomenal. I think it's really good. And then you've got the, if I click on that and we go back here, which is one that I like to use, which is the OS leisure maps function on the mapping and the terrain look. I can see there's viewpoints here. There is uh, uh, the peak over there where the rings get really tight you can see it's 596 meters up you can see the various other geographical features around the hike and it just helps me see the map a lot better you can see that's the national trust area so you are within the national trust area on this end of the hike it's a good map and that you can access via clicking on the mapping service down here on the left again, the route card gives you the start point and the grid reference for it and the finish point and the grid reference for that. That is useful to have for safety reasons and also so that when you're using your mapping service with a hard copy map, then you have the grid references to go by. Finally, you've got the elevation grid here. So the bar over here flies through, if I move this down, the bar over here flies through where the points of the highest peak will be, where the elevation gains are going to be, and therefore you might want to have a little break at a certain point and have something to drink and maybe a sandwich and then continue hiking up, where you might want to rest, where you might see a viewpoint because you realize that's a good peak looking out onto various farmland or a woodland etc so it gives you a little indication of where you are at the point of elevation and as you see once i start moving my cursor over the elevation gain you can see on the right hand side of the map it shows you exactly where you are on the hike when you're at that elevation very useful indeed so now that I've favorited it, what I can do, routes, and go down to my favorites. So favorite routes. So if I click on that, we can see I have plenty of other walks there. If I scroll down right to the bottom, I can see the trail magazine Sugarloaf. So it is favorited in my favorite route map section and I can access it at a click of a button. And once again, click on the map and the route map and it gives me the route. So the left panel is the control panel for the entire route. It's got everything you need and you might need on a specific hike or a cycle ride or a trek. It's very useful. You can adjust the um, output function so you can either print it out and you can say I'll have an A4 portrait or a landscape format and at what scale you want to use the mapping. I normally use 1 to 25. I find that is round about the right scale. I normally don't print my map. I actually have a specific hard copy map of the area when I get out there. I also export my GPX file and carry that with me. And I would carry that on my mobile phone, but mostly on my Garmin. I would export it and import it into my Garmin software so that I can 
route and track my my uh, adventure through my Garmin. That's really about it uh, as far as discovering routes goes. Uh, what I will do is in a next video in, in the near future, I will show you how to create custom routes because it's more advanced, more intricate, and hence I will show you that in a separate video as it will take just as much time to show you that. I hope you've uh, found a little bit of information about how to discover routes using the Ordnance Survey map. And uh, if you have any questions, then please drop them down below in the comment section and perhaps I can help you further over there. But this is the basic idea of what you can do with the Ordnance Survey map when discovering routes. So once you have discovered your route, favorited it and downloaded the GPX, you can either add the GPX file to your Garmin device or add it to your mobile device. The Ordnance Survey company also has a mobile app that you can use in conjunction with their online software. I would also suggest you carry a map, one of their hard copy maps, along with the GPX file that you've downloaded. There is no substitute for a hard copy map. It is the go-to place for most uh, advanced and expert hikers and backpackers and trekkers because the hard copy map is one that will stay with you for life all the time on you. If your devices fail, then you still have the hard copy map. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this demonstration video of the uh, Ordnance Survey online mapping service and how you can discover routes. This is specifically about routes and the interface. In my future video, I am actually going to go through creating custom routes because it is more intricate, it is a bit more advanced and will take just as much time to show you the basic requirements and the basic um, skills required to create the, the routes and the trails. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have and you're not a subscriber, please go ahead and subscribe up here or down here somewhere. Give me a like if you've enjoyed and learned something new and drop me a comment in the comments section if you have any questions or would like to find out more information about this particular app and especially discovering routes. And I will see you out and about and hopefully soon out on the trails.